It's been an amazing year in different ways, a very challenging year. And this morning, just for a brief time, I know it's, it's been quite a busy season with Christmas and, and hopefully you've had some time to be with some, some family, other households that we haven't been able to be with or mix with over the last period of time. Hopefully you've had some good family time in some way. I know choosing how you're going to do that has not been an easy one. Uh, but we just want to look at this word perspective for a few minutes this morning as we kind of step into this new year that's, uh, that's coming. And we've had an unprecedented year, one like we've never had before. We've had quite an extreme year as well uh, in ways that we've probably never had before, certainly in most of our, our lifetimes. And many of us would want to say goodbye to 2020 and with hope look into 2021 as a year that's going to be very, very different than the one we've just lived. We've been through a global pandemic that has taken nearly 1.6 million people's lives. 21st century life has been shaken like it never has before. And the result of that is many of us, many people in many nations have really had to reevaluate their lives. What's the real meaning? What's the purpose? What, what really matters uh, in life at this, at this time? And for some, this year has been the toughest year uh, maybe because there's been loss of a family member or a close friend. Maybe for others working in the NHS and in care, being on the front line in hospitals and in their workplace, facing the reality of what many people have been through. Maybe others have lost jobs. Maybe businesses have not gone in the way that people have wanted and maybe they've even come to an end. Maybe others have gone through just really tough times in different ways. But 2020 has been quite a challenge. Mental health issues have come to the fore a lot more because of the lockdowns and isolation and in different situations. There's even a new phrase that has come out now called long COVID, where there's still the effects of the virus in people's health and their bodies. Even though they don't test positive anymore, there's still the kind of effects of having had the virus at some point uh, during this last year. So it's been a challenge, it's been tough for many. But by contrast, and this is where this year has been such an extreme, by contrast, for others it's been, it's been an amazing year in a different way. They've, people have had time like they've never had time before. Maybe many have been furloughed and actually found so much time on their hands. They've, they've relaxed more. They've caught up on sleep. They've done more family things. They've found they've had time to do things they don't normally do. They've done the house up. They've sorted the garden out. Uh, they've started a new hobby. It, it, it just would be such a weird contrasting year where for some it's been the challenge of a lifetime uh, and everything gone on. But for others, it, it, it seems like, wow, I've had, I've, it's been an amazing year. I've thoroughly enjoyed it. And, and it just seems to mess with our heads and our minds in terms of the different scenarios that, that we've all been through in different ways. One thing amongst it all that we've all become experts in is Zoom. <laughs> we've been seeing each other in little boxes on a screen, helping to connect face to face. Maybe some of that's been socially, maybe that's been for business reasons. Others, we've been able to connect to meetings like this on Sundays to stream things. Maybe others have had conferences on Zoom like they never have before. And it's made the world in one sense seem a slightly smaller place. And for some scenarios, maybe actually united us in a way that we haven't been united. But I think one thing that it really has shown the world this year in 2020, with through the pandemic and everything that's gone on, is we are not actually in control. We're not actually in charge in the way that we think we are as people, as humanity. There are things that are go, go on that we have no control over. And we've been trying to find answers to and obviously there's been vaccines that have started to be rolled out these last few weeks and are going to be accelerated into the new year, which is going to have a brilliant, brilliant effect uh, on, on society and, and hopefully enable things to, to change dramatically in the first few months of this, this coming year. But life as we've known it has been shaken into unknown territory. 
It's changed everybody's perspective on life, on what matters, on pri priorities, on many different ways. It's a, in ways, it's affected our perspectives. And perspective is how you see something. Perspective is your reality. And so whatever kind of year you've been through, whether a massively tough one and challenging one, or whether it seems to be the opposite end of the scale or something in between, your perspective is your reality in terms of how you will summarise 2020 in terms of what you've been through and what you have experienced. In relation to that, Pastor Colin brought a brilliant message on Christmas Day and acted out this message, uh, uh, this conversation between John, one of Jesus' disciples, and Mary, the mother of Jesus. And John gave his whole kind of perspective of his experience of Jesus, what it looked like. And when Jesus came, many people's paradigms were massively affected. They were expecting the Messiah to be one thing, a certain way and do certain things. But when Jesus came and, and what surface was him being the Messiah and the way he was and the things he did, did the things he, he, he did, it challenged everybody's paradigms. It changed everybody's what had been known up to that point and it took them into the unknown. And John, like us in what we've been through in the last year, he didn't understand everything about Jesus. He didn't understand some of the moments that they were going through. He didn't understand everything that Jesus was saying. He didn't necessarily understand the things Jesus said in the context of the culture and everything that was taking place then. And that challenged his paradigms, challenged their paradigms. And as we come to the end of, of this year, whatever perspective we have and paradigm changes there have been, in the middle of it, God has been speaking. In the middle of it, God has been working. And as we come into 2021, I believe God wants us to have, have His perspective as we come into this new year, because God's perspective is His reality. And he wants his perspective to be our reality. How we see things, how we understand things, how we discern things, how we then speak about things, how we pray about things, how we make decisions in the light of his perspective and how he sees them. And sometimes we want to come into a new year and we want loads of things defined. So what is God saying? What's it going to look like? What's it going to mean? And when I was praying into this and, and, and God started to talk to me about perspective, he said to me, Clive, perspective is all about relationship with me. And there's a verse in Jeremiah 17 that we're going to look at. Uh, chapter 17 of Jeremiah, verses 7 and Eight, Because this is not where I would have necessarily start, started with perspective. I think I was thinking a bit more like, okay, God, you're going to define some things here. What it's going to look like, what it's going to mean and everything else. And, but actually God said, no, I want to rewind a bit and look at this verse. So let's read it together. Jeremiah 17, verse 7 and 8. Blessed is the man who trusts in the Lord, whose confidence, whose certainty is in him. He will be like a tree planted by the water that sends out its roots by the stream. It does not fear when heat comes and its leaves are always green. It has no worries in a year of drought and never fails to bear fruit. It's interesting how God's perspective worked out in our lives is rooted in relationship with Him. Because it says here, blessed is the man who trusts in the Lord. And this verse, these two verses talk about the, a man who trusts in God is blessed even in the midst of adversity, even in the midst of challenge, even in the midst when heat comes, the drought comes, or there's worries that could try and take us out. God says there's a way of, of staying, living in a blessed way uh, and living in the things of God in the face of challenge. And it says here, blessed is the man who trusts. Now, trusts 
trust comes in the context of relationship. If you don't know someone, you don't know whether you're going to trust them or not. But as you get to know someone, you know the trust you can have in them because you know their character, you know who they are. There's, there's, a, there's a, a, a pathway of relationship that has developed and, and there's been something you've walked that has helped develop that trust. And it says, blessed is the man who trusts, who is in relationship with the Lord, whose confidence and certainty is in him. So when we talk about perspective, God is saying to us, your perspective of 2021 going forward is going to be rooted in your relationship with me. And then in that relationship, what you hear me saying, because relationship with God is a walk day by day. And as we walk with him day by day, what does that look like? A walk with God in relationship is a walk of abiding. What does abiding mean? To abide means to, to go step by step and live in a place of rest with the one that you are walking with. And as you abide and rest with the one that you are walking with, in pace with, in step with, you then hear what is being said. You hear the heartbeat, you hear the words, you hear the tone, you hear the, 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 the compassion and the the. the the emotions that that come with because God has emotions and he speaks to us and he lets us know how he's speaking to us by his spirit and therefore that leads us to enable us how to respond to what he's saying how to obey then what he is saying how many of you know that God is never taken by surprise sometimes we want to know things when we want to know them and God spoke to me a few years ago and you know I've spoken about living in the great rest uh, a number of years ago and at different points. And one of the questions he asked me in that context when he was talking to me about what it means to live in his rest, he said to me, Clive, are you happy not knowing what you think you need to know when you need to know it? Or when you think you need to know it, are you happy? And you know, when God asks you a question, he already knows the answer. And, and this relationship is one of trust. And as we come into 2021, as we walk with him, we don't necessarily need to know everything we need to know when we think we need to know it. As we walk with him, God speaks to us and gives us what we need to know when we need to know it. He knows when we need to make some plans. So he, know, he speaks to us and lets us know what we need to know in relation to making those plans. He knows we need to make decisions. He, needs, he knows what we need to know in order to make those decisions. So as we walk with him, our trust is in him. Our confidence is in him, it says here. It says, we will then be like trees planted by the water that sends out its roots by the streams. Let's live rooted in Jesus in this next year. And over these next few days, I want to encourage you to spend some time with Jesus, with the Holy Spirit and allow him to speak to you. Get a notepad and a pen. Just spend some time with him. Jot down some things he's showing you. Jot down some scriptures that he leads you to. Let God speak to you. He might not give you some massive download about 2021. But what he might do is speak to you about him in relation to you. Hearing his voice, hearing his heart, knowing that as you come into 2021, it can be a year of rest and abiding. It doesn't need to be a year of fear or apprehension or what's it going to be like, anxiety or, or anything like that. It can be a year of rest. And so God wants to enable us to live in 2021 in a place of rest, peace, trust with him so that we walk with him, abide with him, respond to him, obey what he's saying to us. And as we do that, his purposes in our lives will un fold. Whether that's in your home life, in your family, your marriage, whatever the situation, maybe it's in your business, your work scenario, your work world. God wants us to walk with him step by step. And God is never taken by surprise. So as we trust in him, he can let us know what we need to know when we need to know it. Our heads say, well, of course I trust God because I know he's trustworthy and he never fails. 
But what God wants to do is to where we, where He needs to in our lives is to move that from here. Well, I know I know what God does. I know how He works. He wants to move it from there to here, to know that God has everything I need when I need it. He knows how I need to live in this next year. He knows what's going to happen. Therefore, as the word says, I don't need to fear or worry and be anxious. As daily, I take some time to put my trust and my faith in him, to listen to his voice and to be led by him through the challenges, the highs and the lows, whatever 21 is going to look like. In 2021, I want it to be a year where I grow, where I mature in the things of God so that I move forward in the way that he wants to see me in my life, in my marriage, in my family, in my workplace, in my community, with my neighbours, my friends, whatever it's going to look like in our lives. Then what does the rest of the verse say? Those that trust in him are blessed. There's a confidence, a certainty. Their lives are planted by streams of water. That's the life of who God is. There's no fear when heat comes. Leaves are green. There's a flourishing that I believe God wants every one of us to have in this coming year. And even if there are challenges or worries or fears that want to crowd and overtake, the word says here, as we walk with him and trust him, we won't fail to bear fruit. Why? Because our lives are not rooted in the natural circumstances around us. Our lives are rooted in him, the one who has supernatural life. So let's just take a few moments just to pray and give the rest of this year, the last few days of the year to the Lord and say, Father, I want these next few days to be a time where I hear your voice. Anything you want to say to me that I need to just leave behind in 2020 and not take into 2021. I want to hear anything that you want to say to me so that as I step into 2021, I'm going to step into it with your perspective, not with, well, it's going to be like this or like that or anything. No, it's going to be, Father, I thank you that you've spoken and I come into this coming year with your heart, your mind, your understanding. And like your word says, I can come in confidently in a place of trust knowing that this year is going to be a year where I walk with you and you walk with me. A year that I'm going to flourish and grow in different ways and be a blessing to other people. So Father, we, we just thank you for who you are. We thank you for 2020. Father, where it's been a challenge and a tough year, we just submit all of that to you. The highs and the lows. Where it might have been an amazing year, we still give all of that to you. And Father, in these next few days, the last few days of 2020, Father, I just thank you that you speak into every one of our lives as we take time to abide, as we've said here. Let's go into 2021 already abiding and remaining. So Father, as we do that, I thank you that you speak into every heart and life. And we just want to leave behind everything that this year has represented. And move into 2021 with a clean sheet of paper, opening a new chapter for you to write, Father, what you want this year to look like so that we live with your perspective, with your understanding, with your insights, so that we are led by you in every way. And so, Father, I thank you. I praise your name. Father, I thank you for these first few weeks of January as we have some time as a church of prayer and fasting, just setting our, our lives towards you at the beginning of this year. As we have some encounter 
evenings through January, as we have some evenings in our homes where we're going to center around the table and eat together, pray together and have communion together as we do a mixture of being together online, but also being together in our homes. I thank you, you would move by your spirit in a fresh way at the beginning of the year. There'd be a release of your spirit for 2021 to navigate that with you by faith, with love, with a massive sense of hope as well in 2021. And I thank you, you would lead us as a church in all that you want to do in this coming year. And so, Father, we agree right now over 2021, we speak your goodness, your blessing and your abundance over our lives personally, over our marriages, over our families, over our homes and households, over our workplace, over our businesses, over our community, over our friends and neighbours, where we live. We just speak your goodness and your abundance over this year. That as, as believers, we're going to be people of hope in 2021 in an even greater way than we have been in 2020. So Father, we thank you for all that you have done this year. We rejoice and give you glory and honour for those that have given their lives to you, those that have been filled with your spirit, those that have been released in tongues, those that have heard your voice for the first time, for others that have been healed physically, mentally, emotionally, relationships that have been restored. We thank you for what you have done by your spirit in our lives and others that we know. We give you glory and honour for all of that. And we just take a moment now, before 2021 has even started, before it's even begun, we give you glory and thanks for 2021 and all that you're going to do in us, amongst us and through us by the power of your Holy Spirit in your mighty name to bring you glory and honour. We thank you, Lord, and we praise your mighty name. Amen. Amen. Well, have a blessed last few days of 2020 and let's come into 2021 with a great expectation to live the life that God has given us with his perspective in the way that he wants us to. So be really, really blessed. Have a happy and prosperous and abundant new year and we'll see you in 2021. Bless you.